This is Wretched Radio. Typically, when I share something with you, it is because I've read something, a book, an article, whatever it happens to be, and I will mark it up with a big blue marker. Friel, why would we care about such trivial information? Normally, it'll be a line or two, a sentence, what I think is the, for instance, for instance, all I've got right here is a headline that is highlighted in blue. Judge calls for review into fertility laws after transgender man gives birth using a sperm donor. Now, there's a story from you out of the uck. Why didn't I mark up the rest of that? Because I don't care! Our world has gone absolutely bonkers. Do you see that they passed legislation in Denver? I'm sorry for this, but that it is legal to do your business on the street. Let's just leave it at that. Numbers one and two. What? Totally legal. Just drop trowel right in the middle of downtown Denver, which is a nifty city. Not and you long. can just do your business right there and just leave it. Because apparently you have the right to mess up a public space. You know, no consideration of anybody else. We are so confused. We are so astray. Western civilization is so post-Christian, and it's only going to get wonkier. This judge calling for review of fertility laws after a transgender man, so actually a woman, gives birth using another fellow's sperm. It's just an example of being bonkers. That's all it is. But I I didn't highlight the rest of it because whatever. Do that all the time. For instance... Here's another article that I barely marked up. This is out of the UK also. Vegans, those are the people my understanding is, not only do they not eat any sort of delicious meats, but nothing that is even produced by them. So no eggs, no honey from bees, nothing. Now, I would remind them the plants have feelings too. Nevertheless, vegans strike deal with... I don't know what this is in Great Britain. I'm sorry, my British friends. An abattoir, A-B-A-T-T-O-I-R. Is that a French word, abattoir? They've come up with some sort of of an agreement so that the vegans. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Slaughterhouse? Well, that makes sense then. It's a little shorter. They go to the slaughterhouse when the cows are coming in to give them last rites and say, we love you, we are sorry to the cows. Because. They're people, too. Cows have a living soul and a conscience. No, and no. We really want to help comfort them. You're not. They don't speak English. As brilliant as your accent is, the cows have no idea what you're saying. They're here for our enjoyment, for our benefit. We eat them because God gave them to us. Do we do it sensitively? Yes. Do we thought do it thoughtfully? Yes. But do we do it? Yes, just saw an interesting film last night that was mm, a bit propaganda. How do I know? It was voiced by Morgan Freeman, whose voice keeps getting more and more bassy. Trem- tremulous? Was that? No, that that wouldn't be the right. Sonorous? Sonor? Yeah, there's a there's an os word. Low Sonor- and resonant. It sounds like he's also getting a little bit older, but nevertheless, it was about a doctor from France who got brain had a brain tumor. He went through the typical routine, and then it came back again, and he asked himself the question, is there anything I can do to my body to help it? And so his focus is coming up with things that naturally help you fend off cancer cells in your body. Very, very interesting. Basically, get the chemicals out of your food, Going from going into your stomach. So, you know, the precessed prefab funyuns probably would be cut from your diet. Don't breathe in the stuff, the chemicals from Febreze, etc. Exercise was the third. And then finally, it was de-stressing. So, of course, we took a little view at mindfulness and how amazing it is. But there were things that you can do to de-stress and, during, or, and also to fight and ward off cancer so you don't even have to get treatments. Nothing clinical has been done, but it does look like MD Anderson is going to be doing some studies to see the benefit. 
the actual benefit of these things because there's not big money in telling people to eat right, exercise well, and work, but not to the point of being completely frazzled. Oh, you don't I don't make know. A whole there's lot of money. money. There's oh. money in, in yeah. that. Two words, gluten-free. You're right. <laughs> organic. And you can use shame as a selling point. Do you know what organic means? It's a Latin word. I looked this one up. Don't bother, Joey. It doesn't mean slaughterhouse. Look, look, looked it up. Organic means expensive and flavorless. It's two words combined together. I don't know what it is exactly. But during this particular film, it was about a 90-minute special, they were showing the where, where cows live. And you have a tendency to think, well, they're wandering around in fields because that's the only time I see cows. But if you will, this was a acres and acres and acres and acres with thousands of cows never eating grass just eating the the stuff that's the soy that gets provided for them which they thought has a bunch of chemicals in it which you eat and then you get the chemicals in you too that aside the way that those animals were treated like when you see these chickens that are locked up in a little where they can't even move it's like okay I'm not becoming a member of PETA, but we can do better than that, can't we? We should care about our animals, but not to the point where we give them last rights and say, Moo, I love you, before they become a hamburger. Maybe that happens when you eat all those chemicals that were in the cow. That's, that, this fellow, by the way, this fellow in this particular documentary... He was able to stave off a recurrence of brain cancer. They gave him several years. He lived 20, for whatever that's worth. But then he succumbed, succumbed to cancer. Kind of sad because had a brand new little boy. Oh. Those are the types of stories. Don't mark up much. But this one, permit me to read to you this fractured fairy tale. You're going to think that I wrote this as a spoof. The crucial role your attitude plays in the spiritual realm. This from a Bethel pastor. Bethel, the center of the wingdingery, that's right, the wingdingery of the NAR movement. This is a great example. I woke up this morning to the sound of my daughter wiggling around in her crib. I threw off the covers, rolled to my feet, and walked around the crib. An angel was floating over my daughter. He continues. It hovered two feet above her, looking at her face to face. The angel was wearing a robe patterned with silver stars. The stars fell off its edges, pouring down over the face of the smiling infant in the crib. You know, every time the Bible talks about an angel appearing, there is one consistent reaction. Fear? That's the one, which is why angels always say fear not, because they are scary beings, because they are so much more... They have different powers than we do. And it doesn't mean that they are elevated above us in value. Human beings, they're, we're number two. We're number two. God's number one. Angels below that. I've seen angels wearing similar robes in the past. And most of the time, the Holy Spirit told me, okay, that the starry robes represent an impartation of wisdom. I picked her up and carried her downstairs. As I made my way down, I saw a protection angel standing next to the door. He's been standing in the same spot ever since we moved into the house. He holds a tall spear in his right hand and wears silver-plated armor. He didn't make eye contact, but he never does. Protection angels are nothing if not intent. I opened the fridge, browsed breakfast options, deciding on eggs and toast. I was humming a worship song, so I was not surprised to see a sparkling light drifting around me in rhythm with my voice. The lights traced patterns of color in the air as I hummed my mostly in tune song. Whether these small balls of lights are angels, heavenly hosts, or something else, I can't say. They are things that are attracted to the presence of God. Huh? What verse says that? Then I started to smell burning eggs. It was then I saw a demon come around the corner. Not much to it. He was a little under three feet tall with grayish skin and a pot belly. Shuffled forward, its pace and posture that of a toddler who has smelled something tasty. 
I could have commanded it to leave. I banished thee from the household or something like that, but that wouldn't really solve the problem. The problem was in my head, so I found myself humming again the same worship song. I gave my head a little shake to clear it, smiled at my daughter, went back to the fridge to get more eggs, and the demon turned around and skittered away. I hummed the song all the louder. My daughter's angel turned to me and gave me a quick nod of approval. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! Senior team member, Bethel Church in Atlanta. It's one of the satellites of Bethel in Redding, California. The nuttiness rolls on in Charisma Magazine. This is Wretched Radio.